What's up team, this is Coach Abraham checking in with another video. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a comparison of what some researchers did and the differences between first division professional footballers, second division, third division, and also amateur players. This is information that can go a long way to truly understand what it takes to be at the pro level. Also, I need to note that any type and all the performance training that you do will never excel the skill level. And what I mean by that is, if you are not a good player, a talented player, have good skill level, technical, tactical, you will not make it, okay? But we can enhance our performance and any little thing that we can do to enhance and make us that next level player, why wouldn't we wanna do so? This is what this video is gonna be about, guys. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Yeah, top of the morning, I know that you thought I was dormant. Woke up early from shots that was swarming a black and First thing, you might have seen this on my Instagram already, so make sure you're following me right there. Second, make sure you leave a like, drop a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe so you won't miss any of my new videos. But remember guys, physical fitness is a big attribute needed to play at the pro level. Physical fitness, including strength, power, speed, and flexibility is one of the most crucial factors for soccer success. Researchers conducted a study to compare fitness parameters between Greek professional, professional and amateur footballers at different levels. So who did that include? That included 381 total Greek soccer players or footballers, which consisted of the first division, second division, third division, and amateur players. And guys, here is what they compared. They compared their VO2 max, their velocity of maximum oxygen consumption, their anthropometrics, which includes body mass, height, and fat percentage. There's something on fat percentage I really want you guys to see, which is very interesting. Their jumping ability, their power, which consisted of two tests, and their flexibility. So, as you can see guys, the body mass, it's about similar, right? Between 75, 74, 73, and kilos. As far as the age, the first division players were actually about a year to two years younger. The height, we did see that at the first division and at the second division, they were the tallest at 1.8 meters, which is right under six feet. Now, the big one, guys, I want you to see is the body fat. Check it out. For the first division players, you have 8.38 as being like the medium or the average, compared to amateur pros or amateur players at 11.24. Now, 11.24, that's still pretty low body fat. If you're at 11.24, you are gonna be lean already. But take this into consideration, guys. These first division players, they are at a really low body fat. That means that they are not carrying any excess body fat. So, Division one players are taller, which is in line with other high level European leagues. We already went over that. And body fat, division one players have the lowest body fat at 8.4% compared to amateurs at 11.2%. Guys, this research is accordance with previous studies and suggests that as the level of performance rises, the percentage of body fat reduces. And as long as players are going through the regular soccer competition season, the percentage of body fat reduces. Lower body fat percentage is associated with increased performance. I've said this in a couple other videos back and also in the video where I described should footballers lose fat and weight, that players with less body fat perform better. Again, that's excess weight that you're carrying. Guys, this gives you an insight on how much players weigh, their body fats. So this is something that you should really take into consideration. The results for their VO2 max and velocity VO2 max. As you can see guys, the first division players beats everybody. Like it doesn't get better than this as far as wanting information on what the pros are looking like compared to others. Division one players showed significantly higher values for both VO2 max and velocity VO2 max compared with other groups. These levels reveal that there is an increase of overall distance covered and high intensity actions. So obviously at the higher level, the intensity is gonna be higher, but not just the intensity, but also the volume. So they're constantly needing to be at that high level, which is very demanding, which is no surprise why their aerobic capacity, that VO2 max is higher. It's also no surprise why their body fat is lower. They're burning so many calories. All right, guys, up to jumping ability. This was, man, I'm telling you guys, this is a banger of a study. In the squad jump, first division beat everybody as well. Division one players showed significantly higher values for both the counter movements and the squad jump compared with the other groups. Competition and training needs at top levels are increased, therefore leading players of the higher divisions to train with a more systematic way compared with players of lower leagues where the competition is lower. And that just means their strength and conditioning coach, their performance coach, whatever you wanna call him or her, 
um, are taking these players and ensuring that these players can handle these high levels of, of playing, whether it's from a technical standpoint, the shooting, they need to ensure that the players' muscles are strong, all these little small components of muscles that are the stabilizers, and but also their fitness component. If a player is not fit, if you are not fit as a player, you're not contributing to yourself. And if you're not contributing to yourself, you're not helping out your team at all, guys. So this is something that you need to be considered. Now, to add my opinion, at the current level that you're at right now, maybe you don't need to be at this top, top level because it's very demanding. And this can lead to injuries if you do not progress to it accordingly, right? At the end of the day, it's not gonna be your fitness that does everything for you, although it's very important. This is why we're looking at this research, but it's gonna be your overall skill level and experience and everything that goes with that. So the overall findings, guys, and what you need to do, first division professional soccer players showed significantly higher power, flexibility, and aerobic capacity. Skill level, technical, tactical, IQ, experience will ultimately be the deciding factor on what level you play. Performance training will never replace that. However, it should be in your best interest to improve any and all physical qualities to enhance and supplement your skill level. If I was in your shoes, I'd want to do anything to be at that pro level. I would be increasing my speed, my power. I would always be training this. Guys, if you want more information or want an in-depth program, I have my programs on my website. Make sure you check them out. If you want something more specific to you, mainly really for my college and professional players. I do have custom and online coaching. This is more catered to you and more specific for your current season and goals. Guys, this is no different than what I preach on my Instagram, than what I preach on all my other YouTube videos. You need to be improving your performance, okay? But you need to be also practicing your shooting, your technical level, your IQ, uh, doing video analysis, doing everything that you need to do. If I was training serious, I would be training two to three times at most in the gym and doing my speed. And maybe even I would, I would even just drop my gym to two times a week. But hey, that's just me because I believe you need to be the best player possible and you should use that excess time to really just improve in your skills and whatnot. But if you're doing two, three times a week, guys, you're doing good. Four times, honestly, you're not a, a bodybuilder, you're a footballer. And this is why I say you shouldn't be training more than three times a week in the gym. and Guys, make sure you're sprinting, make sure you're doing your plow metrics. Don't forget that because if you're just doing weights, you're no better than just any other guy that's lifting weights. For us guys, this team, this community, we're taking our, our, our footballing to the next level. I want you to train right, train like an actual athlete, take your performance to the next level. Get on a good program that's actually progressing you. Again, guys, check out my programs if you haven't already or check out my video on how to create a program, all right? I just don't wanna take your money, although I'll take it. I want you to elevate your knowledge so you can elevate your game. And guys, tell me about your experiences. What have you learned? What knowledge have you applied to your game? I love when you guys send me Instagram videos on what you're doing. It's just awesome to know that I have a community that really wants to better themselves. And guys, do me a favor, share this video, share my channel with all your other footballing friends. Take their game to the next level as well. Help your team out. So guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Drop a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned. And hey, I'll see you guys in the next one.